welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. Finally, feels like fall here in the Midwest. I've been enjoying seeing all the brightly colored leaves that are still on the trees. I feel like last year it turned cold and all the leaves dropped. At least that's my perception of it. I probably am wrong, but it is nice to see all the many different colors. I apologize, you might hear beeping. They are still working on repaving a section of the parking lot in my apartment complex. They don't consult me when they're gonna do this, unfortunately. So I apologize if you hear beeping in the background. So despite the beeping, let's go ahead and jump into it for my book wrap up. I finished one book this week and that was Station Eternity by Mer Lafferty. This was the one book of the year that I was super excited for, and it is a murder mystery in space, following Mallory Viridian, who has always seemed to attract murders. Someone dies around here every so often, unlike Jessica Fletcher from Murder, She Wrote, or Father Brown, or Miss Marple, where people are like, oh, it's good that you were here to help us solve it. No, they suspect her. They think that she has something to do with it because this is way too many murders around her for, you know, circumstances not to be suspicious. And she's tried to get a PI license and was blocked because, again, they are suspicious of her. She ends up running away to Station Eternity, which is a sentient space station, and asks for asylum, and it is granted. At this time, only three humans are on this station, and she tries to have as little to do with the other two as possible because she doesn't want any murders. And then she finds out that Eternity is going to allow more humans to come aboard the station, and she's freaking out. She goes to one of, well, she first starts off with the ambassador, who is just disagreeable to be disagreeable. He doesn't care. And so then she turns to the other human, Zan, who ends up, they knew each other in college and then they met up again and their paths keep crossing. It's at least some human contact, some friend. Things unfold from there. This is not a perfect read for me as I feel like the, we lost some of the mystery elements as we were introduced to more characters, but it was still fun to go through the process. And then uh, Lafferty did an interesting thing where when we are meeting new characters, not right away, but pretty soon afterwards, we would get like a flashback chapter from their perspective. Nobody, well, there's probably only one character in here that you could say is completely innocent and that's lovely. And even then she's not like an innocent, she's just not somebody who has a lot of experience around murders and chaos, typically. The characters in this book are flawed heavily and make decisions based off of those flaws. And it was really nice to see that the side characters had their own motivations for things that were going on. And it's nice to see that this is a world. That, you know, just because chaos is happening, it doesn't mean people all of a sudden go, we'll all work together and we'll make things good. And no, they everybody is running around doing their own thing in the midst of everything. And Mallory has been charged from station security to solve the murder that has happened. As someone who doesn't read a lot of mysteries, I think that this was interesting. I had guessed what was like I had guessed who the murderer was and then picked up on some other elements for some of the side characters we meet. And it was nice to be right. But the way it was done, it's like the hints were dropped, but I could see why Mallory didn't pick him up at that time. It was it was one it was more one of those things as an impartial observer, you see these things and you're like, oh wait, but da 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 and Mal it's not something Mallory would have picked up on being in the thick of things. So I had a lot of fun with this book. And then after finishing that, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to read. So I picked up Fox Hunt by Rim Wigmore, and I tried it out, and this isn't going to be for me. I read the first chapter, wasn't interested, went to the end, and just how it ended, I was like, eh? I'm not sure if I want to go on that journey. The only thing I really wanted to know was 
why somebody is wanting to kill her if she isn't an energy hoarder. And I flip, you know, randomly flipping through as I was, I couldn't find it. Would have thought that that would have been a bigger portion of the book. I don't know. It has a lot of good ratings on Goodreads. It seems like one of those books that if it works for you, it works for you. And if it doesn't, it just doesn't. DNFing my sci-fi buzzword prompt. I then read the first chapter of Ocean's Echo by Everina Maxwell. I think when I'm in the mood, I'm going to love this book. We are introduced to his name. We're introduced to Tennell in that first chapter and this is a completely different feel from Winter's Orbit. So I think that when I'm in the mood to do this, or when I'm in the mood to read this, I'm, I'm going to love it. But I'm just not in the mood for it quite yet, which is okay. So I then picked up Bring Me a Unicorn by Anne Morrow Lindbergh, the wife of Charles Lindbergh. And this is a grouping of letters and diary entries and it's starting in 1922. Reading the introduction by Anne, it, she basically calls herself out for her privilege. She talks about, yes, she realizes she can, she comes from a rich family, that which has given her certain opportunities. Her family has a big focus on education, which has given her many opportunities. She also talks about how being very attached to family and not associating a lot with other people gave her a very insular upbringing, so didn't get the chance to really see the world for what it was around her. She, it was, she was very sheltered. And I'm just like, damn, she called herself out. And this book came out in the 1970s, and a lot of the things that she's saying are you know, topics that we talk about today, like white privilege. What does it mean to realize the situation that you've been born into and grown up in and how it affects your worldview. So I've been enjoying this so far. And then reading her letters and her diary entries really is giving me Anna Green Gables vibes, which I think probably makes sense. I, if I remember right, I think Anna Green Gables was being written around this time period or right before this, so maybe it was something that she read. But it's very upbeat and kind of whimsical. I'm not sure if that's quite the right word. The relationship she has with her, especially with her mother and her sisters, it's very heartwarming, which that is something Anna Green Gables is. Despite Anna Green Gables' tragic backstory, the relationships she develops is very heartwarming and it feels like that when I'm reading these letters. So enjoying this so far. And then I picked up the Mass City by Genevieve Cogman. This is the second book in the Invisible Library series. I'm enjoying this. It's very interesting because in the first book you brought Irene and Kai together as a partnership and in this book Kai has been kidnapped. That's not a spoiler, it happens in the very first chapter. And so now Irene is trying to find him and it talks about her thought process as she goes through all that but at the same time Cogman doesn't want you to unattach from Kai, and so you're getting these Kai interludes. So, very interesting style. I'm enjoying this a lot. I think it's been a pretty good reading week for me. On to my writing wrap-up. Last weekend was the Worldwide Write-A-Thon, and I had a lot of fun participating. Had a blast talking to my co-host, and then also just being in the chat for the other streams. One of my goals for this Write-A-Thon was to be more social. So not necessarily to write, but just to be more with the community. Yeah, I think I did it. Saturday before my stream, I did a lot of cleaning and getting things in order. Friday, I made sure to go like grocery shopping. I don't think I actually wrote anything until the stream I was in. And even then, I wasn't really in a writing mood. So it was more, I had the, like this gem of an idea, and I'm just kind of like trying to write things out. And I've realized now what I wrote is not going to work at all. That's just not the direction that story is going to take. But, it, you know, you have to experiment sometimes. And as a discovery writer, I, that's part of my process is sometimes I write scenes that, nope, this isn't how this is going to happen at all. I haven't written since then, but I think I might know what story my brain wants to do for NaNoWriMo. Hopefully my brain cooperates and that is what it is. Because it lets me do a little bit more thinking about it before I sit down to write versus the first day, what am I going to write? But my brain can still hijack me, so we will see. 
November 1st, we will see what I shall be writing. And then for other media, besides YouTube videos, I haven't really been watching anything. I was trying to find a show to jump into and nothing was really catching my interest. So more sampling things. I guess this week was just kind of a lull in that area, but that's okay. That has been my week 43. Been you know, better on the reading front and socializing, even if I haven't exactly been writing, and it's been a great time. So if you have made it this far into the video, I am curious, are you participating in NaNoWriMo? Let me know down below. Thank you, and have a great day.